Hello, welcome back to the Groove Agent 5 tutorial series. Today we're dealing with the, the MIDI FX page, which is a curious and kind of unsatisfactory tag on. It's like they couldn't find anywhere better to put this stuff. There's two basic um, bits of functionality in it. We'll deal with rudiments first. The usual genius black on black color scheme makes it really difficult to see the activate button. So we've got this um, snare sound. Now just bear in mind this is only for this pad, so this MIDI FX page is um, a per pad option. So flam basically means we're going to get two hits instead of one. Drag means we get three. Rough four. I'll just stop there for a moment uh, to explain what the various settings are. It's easier to show it with rough because we've got more hits to play with. So if I set time to maximum, or minimum really pretty obvious what's going on there and we can also sync to the hose tempo in which case we get timing based offsets uh, instead dynamics controls the relative volume of the sounds so at 0% everything is played at exactly the same volume and as we increase dynamics we get uh, a, a ramp up in volume there with humanize we can randomize everything about these multiple hits, both the, the timing and the uh, dynamics. Quite subtle. It always sounds decent, it just introduces a little bit of variance. Yeah, you can hear that. And now that we've dealt with those, we can carry on looking at the different types. Roll provides a continuous roll. Held down. And buzz imitates the where the, the drummer presses the stick into the drum with a, a light hand, the kind of the, the, the Steve Gadd sound. Classic kind of, you know, 50 ways to leave your lover sort of thing. Now all of that's all well and good, but it's all on the same pad. So as things stand at the moment, D1 is playing a buzz. We've lost our actual basic snare. So what we can do is turn this off again and head over to an empty pad. Activate the rudiments over here instead. And now we put this in remote mode. And what this means is this pad is going to broadcast its information somewhere else. That's what the remote control symbol is all about. So now we tie it to D1, which is the snare sound that we want to have our buzz activate on. And so now we've still got our basic snare on D1 here and our uh, buzz on E2. And you can set up all of these different rudiments all pointing at the same uh, instrument so you can build a, a really rich with your 16 standard pads that come with you know usual beat agent presets have only got 16 pads sometimes they go to a second group but every single one of those sounds can had can have every one of these rudiments assigned to it and it doesn't take very long renaming your pads properly. You could maybe um, change all of the colors to something similar so that they all have a, a similar look and feel. And suddenly you've got a very big kit with an awful lot of basically different articulations that you can apply to them as a, as a kind of performance thing. So on their own in internal mode, you know, not so great, but in remote mode, they really come into their own and basically turn one kit into six if you really want to go to town there's absolutely nothing stopping you applying two let's say drags to the same drum sound with different dynamics and now you know the the, the world really is your oyster MIDI delay, I think, has kind of been left behind by the times, but it does give you 
a per pad based um, set of MIDI controls, which is more dynamic than you know your your standard delay that you might have as a, a send effect you know on your entire bus. This is like per pad, so there's an awful lot of flexibility here with very little CPU overhead. And most of the controls are pretty self-explanatory. Time really is. Got a very long, like five second delay potentially in between each pulse. Number of repeats, I don't need to explain. Damping controls, basically it's like feedback, how how much the, uh, the sounds fade out. So they're getting progressively quieter as opposed to at naught, they're all played at the same volume. Just like kill the MIDI if you want to like, you know, stop it halfway through. And in the minus figures, they get louder. Sync all of this to your host tempo if you want. Have pitch inc increases as we go. So that's getting louder and going up in pitch. And distribution introduces uh, a, a variable time delay between each of the repeats. We're getting slower in um, positive values and faster in negative values. So pretty crude, but crude doesn't necessarily make, mean unusable. You know, just because we have these fancy mega reverbs and delays these days in plugins there's absolutely nothing wrong with the good old humble midi delay and because it's per pad and you've got so little overhead in using this stuff then it's definitely something worth thinking of if you've got a particular effect in mind and it can be accomplished here and you don't need to assign a, a, a completely separate plugin to do the job then just bear in mind that it's here and of course everything we talked about from the remote pad perspective to do with rudiments also applies to MIDI delay. So instead of having it on our core snare sound, let's turn that off, go over to a random pad somewhere completely elsewhere, turn MIDI on over here, assign to remote D1, exactly the same kind of effect and if you really want to get absolutely ridiculous you know turn them both on at the same time and chaos will ensue so that's the midi effects page dealt with a curious little oddity but definitely worth knowing about hope you found the video useful and if you did please consider subscribing hit notifications and you find out when the next episode comes out hope to see you then thanks a lot